Okay, hello. This is a new. Uh, this is a tutorial uh, to explain the basics of printing uh, an InDesign booklet. Okay, there's several steps that I do recommend um, checking, double checking before you print. Uh, you probably um, know by now uh, some of them, but just double check this one is obvious for the first time, and then you will make sure that your print is will be perfect. Okay, I have an InDesign here, HelloPrint, several layers, um, images, etc. Um, and a couple things that we have to make sure before we print is uh, first thing is this text here. So it tells you the errors that InDesign has in contours. Um, you can always double click on errors and expand this option and you can expand them again by pressing on the little triangles and double click on the mistakes or errors that um, InDesign has found. And it sets you, it zooms extend or zooms selected <coughs> Uh, to whatever problem, and you kind of knew that whatever interrogation mark this is not good. You can go to links and say that this image is not uh, well resolved. It's just not link missing link. So there's two ways of solving this, and uh, the first one I will just do it fast. Right click, relink. Uh, you select that. I know I have it in my desktop, so you say open, and there you go. So error has disappeared. We only have two errors regarding text. So I'm going to go back Control C to have that mistake actually not relink so I'm gonna just go and to the desktop and see what's going on I intentionally place the image here outside of my package folder the package folder has my InDesign and my links with my images but it's missing this one and again if I go to InDesign uh, you want to zoom out you see one two three four in my folder of links again I have three, so I'm missing one, but intentionally I place it here. So what if I cut Control X, links, Control V? Okay, now I have purposely placed that image inside of my links folder. I'm gonna close that, and guess what happens? Automatically, InDesign understands that uh, because it's searching for uh, any image with that name within the links folder and it finds it, it just removes the problem. Okay, so the, the recommendation is to keep an image always in your links folder. So InDesign knows how to get it. But anyway, you can also right click and link it. Now, a classic problem is that you thought you were taking this image with you and you didn't. Uh, you thought you were taking it because it was in InDesign. Well, wrong mistake so please go ahead and either re-render re-illustrate it etc etc and make sure the next time that you always take those images with you and specifically in the links folder okay good two errors we still have text we can expand and double click on text frame and it zooms extend to that specific problem now the problem in this case is overset text uh, you can just select and the problem in this case is that the, the box of your text is smaller than the text itself. If I zoom this to the side, there it goes. Okay, perfect. Error has, been dis has disappeared, so I can double click on the next one. Or if something is weird here, I, for whatever reason, I create a box with the text and there's nothing there. Let me just make it bigger. And I don't even know what's going on here, so I can double click. And I see there's something there. Let me see if it's a color issue. Oh yeah, it's white. So for whatever reason, it had a white text there. So I'm turning it black. And again, it was very small, something like that. And it had this little red mark. Means that the, there was a problem. So you can just make that box bigger. Sometimes you just don't even know. And you have, I'm going to copy this and paste, paste like many times. You don't even know you have text of somewhere outside of this box until you really s like make it big and say, whoa, I have a crazy stuff now, amount of stuff here. So you can just delete this and put it back in order and print so that mistake disappears. Okay, good. Next, well, I would recommend to any renderings that you have just to um, make sure that you deal with them in Photoshop before you print this out. Um, you can either go to Photoshop, obviously, I'm gonna close that and say open, select your image from your links folder, double click. You can say um, image adjustments and change anything here that you uh, need, like 
get rid of color by desaturating here or working the level so you can uh, push out the, the black and white um, um, this brightness contrast combination in a way uh, intensity of brightness etc um, I do recommend the levels to use them in, in every render it's good to start working from the sides in a little bit until you find that perfect match that gives more depth and more uh, contrast and quality to the image you say okay save that and here's the thing when you save that image this is not so bad as the red sign this actually sign is telling you well be careful uh, something has changed so uh, make sure you update that you double click and updates to the newest uh, image right so again you don't have to delete this and control D again and select that image it changes automatically which is the power powerful thing of having this right okay good next step well I want a black background which many of you would like to have or uh, whatever other color background you can select the rectangle here uh, if I want to go to layers and say well I want to create a ba uh, black background and create a rectangle now if you don't see this in black it's because you're not having the correct fills and strokes I mean the stroke really doesn't matter but um, the fill does matter to have this black another thing could be that you might have uh, done this rectangle in a different layer on top so everything um, becomes like uh, black and what you need to make sure is that you create a layer new layer and you place uh, the, the background in that layer let's say I have the background in the layer one and I want it in background I drag it into that new layer and now drag down the layer so it's underneath the text and the images right now this image had a text in black so I select now I can go to colors make it white right perfect I'm gonna do the same here I'm gonna go to rectangle make sure that the fill is black snap here snap there again for you know I have to make sure that that rectangle I'm selecting and placing in the correct layer background is black right Good. there you go now uh, I don't see the image so it's probably an issue that could turn off there but this one is actually in layer one we'll just take it up to image layers are very straightforward I think good so that's the way to create your background next if I go to right click here in presentation you can see how things are going to look and uh, here's a classic problem of InDesign you create a, ba a black background but you have a difference I don't know if you see it in the, in the uh, YouTube uh, uh, video but the, the cl classic problem is that your image has a tone of black and the background has a different tone so they print very differently now let's go right click presentation here to the previous and here seems like good but even in this case it might print incorrectly so there's a couple steps that you need to do before printing as well one we select the background and we go to eyedrop which uh, matches properties and just to test I'm gonna select any area here you see how the fill um, changes to whatever eyedrop point or pixel so I'm gonna go here and select this one eyedrop that one it becomes like more of a turquoise or like pinky again select select eye drop and let's select something here there we go so it works now all we have to do is obviously select the background eye drop and make sure that we select this black good and this one's fixed next select the background eye drop this black now in theory and of course nothing is perfect these are going to be matching more properly uh, but you might depending on the on the image uh, you might have like different tones that is not going to match as good okay you can also keep on working that eye drop um, in different levels till you you try to find the best match strongly strongly okay so once you have that we are set to go and print First step, uh, we are going to print in two different ways. 
file. Oh, I always leave it as save just in case. And we're good to go. Export. Now, if I want a presentation, okay, all of them I'm going to do it with Adobe PDF Print. Okay, and I'm going to call it Print Presentation. And I'm going to say create a folder action. I'm going to call it Print PDF. You don't have to do this, but just make sure that you're saving everything somewhere that you're taking with you, obviously. Hello, print presentation. Save. This comes up. Now, presentations, pretty much you don't change anything. Just make sure high quality print is here. And then you click on spreads. This is the only thing you have to make sure, obviously, that you have all your pages set to go. No? Say export. And that's your PDF. Let's go and see the pages. Perfect. And here's when you say, hello, print. The my name is blah, blah, blah. The two images are this. And this should be clean and nice. No? Perfect. One and one. And everything goes well. Close this. So that's, again, your printing for a presentation. Now, a little more tricky, but not so sophisticated, is printing for a booklet. First step. File export the same Adobe PDF print. I'm going to say instead of presentation, I'm going to say um, powder copy, for example. Say save all pages. Okay, now something is important is to make sure that the output here, we change a couple things. So the blacks uh, correspond between image and background. So we have to say this convert to destination. And then here in the second option, uh, color match, RGB. Okay. Good. So once you do that, you're making sure that the color, uh, the RGB, which is you know, the color of the black here, corresponds to the color of the black here. So if we match them, it should be perfect. No? Now we're going to say again, we're in general pages and all, export. It's open now. If we get there, you as you can see, these are pages. Let's find that, which is not the good presentation because it breaks each page in two. No. Now this is only for booklets, of course. If you have, if you were doing a, a big um, a board, you will only have one page. So from this point on, it will, wouldn't really matter. So once you have the PDF, this is the step that's a little more tricky depending on the, the plotter or the printer, et cetera, et cetera. So you're going to go File. You're going to say Print. And you have to change a couple settings here. You're going to say Adobe. Well, you're going to select here, sorry. You're going to select here the printer, which I obviously do not have your printer. So just select the one you want, color. Uh, set the properties to be the correct one, so in, um, um, it's going to be tabloid, which is 1117. I'm going to change that. It cannot be eight and a half and 11, but that will come as we go. We're going to say set this to booklet. Okay, we need to set this size. I'm going to do it actually as if it was a PDF, so you, so you cannot have this number here. It has to be 11 by 17. It's double the size as the letter size if your page is letter size. So obviously your book could have a different dimension. And how you know that dimension, I'm going to close this for a second. You can just hover on top of this area and it tells you eight and a half by 11. Now double of this is 11, 17. No? So again, file, print, goes back to where it was. Uh, you should select your printer here. Um, I'm going to select booklet. You have to change these numbers. So normally it's under properties. Uh, now, your property is going to look very different than mine, obviously, but uh, make sure that you set this to to tabloid, whatever you set the properties of your of your uh, machine. Uh, if you have uh, quality settings, uh, make sure that it's photographed and high quality, et cetera, et cetera. Now, again, this is a PDF. It's not your printer. So what you really want is to change this to 17 by 11 inches. Okay. Now, by pressing booklet, uh, and here's the thing about different printers, you know, uh, have Adobe PDF, etc. Uh, you might need to change 
some of these settings how to rotate pages within each sheet or you might need to change some of the settings in your plotter to have double sided uh, now the settings is both sides which is what you have to have here's gonna show you the different uh, settings for your um, for your printer and you're gonna be able to see what is the outcome okay so again because I don't have your printer I cannot really um, show you how exactly to deal with this step but basically you need to set here your printer booklet both sides and check one of these options and make sure here as you as you scroll from one uh, page to another that the combination of pages is uh, adequate now if they don't match don't worry they shouldn't match because if you think of how a booklet is made it's just folded tablet uh, papers and and by folding them they start uh, corresponding one with another one page with another uh, in a perfect manner okay so again you, if if you print this one and and for whatever reason the both sides is not being correctly or is being um, rotated you might need to rethink uh, your elements here portrait landscape auto rotate or whatever your settings are in your printer to to have that option check okay hopefully um, these settings the default ones after sending to booklet and your own printer color and high quality uh, print it should be fine then you print it will send it to that computer you fold them in half and then they will be matching one with the next perfectly that's what you hand to me okay so hopefully enjoy that one uh, let's see how it goes good luck